Hi guys and welcome to my Wrestlemania 38 Night 1 review. So yes, last night or much earlier this morning here in the UK, 5 o'clock in the morning, yes, we uh, Wrestlemania Night 1 concluded. Uh, yes, I watched it with Callum and I've got to say for the most part it was a really solid night of wrestling and a very good first night of Wrestlemania, maybe one of the best night ones we've had. Although last year's night one was good and, and WrestleMania 36, but it was really good. Um, we got some great matches, some great moments, and I don't think there was one... There, was, there wasn't one bad match. There was, there was maybe one or two where you'd be like, eh. But everything else was either really good to great. Uh, so a really good first night of wrestling. Because everything this was a... I think when you looked at night one's card, you were thinking, mm, it's not the best looking WrestleMania card, is there, compared to previous years. But I, I think WWE, they always deliver. When the hype's low, they always deliver with, with, a, good, with a good show. And hopefully it continues tomorrow, well, tonight as well, for night two, which yes. So I have seven matches to talk about. Uh, I'm going to try and be as quick as I can, so I don't want this video to go too long. Uh, so yes, here we go guys, enjoy. So yes, uh, to kick off night one, we had the Usos, Jay and Jimmy, defending the SmackDown Tag Team Belts, up against Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. Um, and this was probably the weakest match of night one, sadly. It... I, th I think this match was cut short, which I'll get to. So the match gets going. It was just good, solid tag team action, you know, as you'd expect from both teams. Um, Shinsuke was getting worked over heavy by both Usos. Uh, there was a cool spot where the Usos hit a frog splash and Shinsuke but he kicks out. Oh, okay. Uh, and Rick Boogs makes a hot tag. He makes a few cool moves. And then when the match really gets going, Rick Boogs looks like he, he, might, he might win. He, he hits like this like double. He gets both Usos on him like that strength. But then his knee buckles. Oh, and he goes out the ring. And I don't know if it was a legit injury. He goes out the ring and then the two Usos work over Shinsuke. And eventually they, they hit the 1D. I think it's called the 1D. Or what? They hit they hit the uh, uh, finisher. And the Usos retain with a winner. Uh, and I think worth pinning Shinsuke. And I think Rick Boogs was, was legitimately injured. I don't think it was a work. I don't think it was a kayfabe. I think it was legitimate because I, the match was cut short. It was, only, it was only six and a half minutes. For a WrestleMania tag team match, that's, that's very short. So I do, I do think the match was cut short because Rick Boogs got legitimately injured, which is a massive shame. You know, I, I think they're both looking forward to their big WrestleMania match. Um, well, Rick Boogs was especially, because I think, I think this is his WrestleMania debut, Rick Boogs. I know Shinsuke's been at previous, previous WrestleManias, but yeah. Sucks for uh, uh, Rick Boogs and Shinsuke. Hopefully Rick Boogs can make a quick recovery. Maybe they, maybe there can be a rematch at WrestleMania Backlash. But, but from what I've heard, Rick Boogs has a torn quad, which is quite serious. So I, I hope he makes a quick recovery. And maybe he's back for WrestleMania Backlash. Maybe he's not. We'll see, but it sucks for Shinsuke and Rick Boogs. I think this, this was going to be a much longer, better match, but it, it got cut short because of Rick Boogs' injury. But it was still, it was still a fine tag team match. It was just, it, it just got cut short sadly. And then next up on night one, we got Drew McIntyre going up against Happy Corbin with Madcap Moss. And yeah, I, I've said all I had to say about this match. Why was this match on a WrestleMania card? Come on, this just this just isn't a WrestleMania match. Poor Drew McIntyre. You know, last year he had a match with Bobby Lashley for the World Championship. WrestleMania 36, he main evented night two. And beating Brock Lesnar. This year he's facing Happy Corbin. It's it obviously just a filler feud to keep Drew busy until hopefully he faces uh, faces from one of the, well, the World Championship later on this year. Um, and it, it was a fine match. You know, Cor Corbin is good. People hate Happy Corbin, man. I'm... You know, but he is good. He's a good wrestler. You know, he can. He's got a good character. You know, he works hard. And he's a good wrestler. He's got some good moves. You know, the end of days and the deep six does some good moves. And yeah, it was quite even. You know, Drew didn't like dominate the match. It was quite even between both guys. Um, there was a, there was a point where Happy Corbin hit a end of days and Drew kicked out. And I believe that is the first time anyone's ever kicked out of an end of days ever. So that's a pretty big deal. No one's ever kicked out of an end of days. That that's a big thing for Drew to have. Because it's a very, very protected finisher, so good for Drew. He gets uh, he, he got the uh, he kicked out, uh, and and then towards the end, I can't remember how. I think he just hits a well. Madcap Moss gets there was there was, there was, like, a, there was like a distraction. I think of Madcap Moss, I think. But then Drew hits a claymore. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, and yeah, Drew McIntyre uh, wins, and hopefully that hopefully 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 that's the end of this feud. Please, 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 because this is this feud's been going on since day one. In January, so please just end this feud, and Drew can go on to something new and better, uh, heading into heading into the rest of this year. Hopefully, a feud of Roman Reigns later on this year. Come on, it was fine. It went eight and a half minutes. It, it was fine. It was good. Just move this, move some please. This match never should have been at WrestleMania, but it, it was fine. It's a win for Drew. He's the first person to beat Happy Corbin, I believe, too, because no one's ever beaten the this version of Happy of Corbin. So yeah, but move on. <laughs> 
Okay, then next up we got a tag team match. Yes, we got the Miz and Logan Paul going up against Ray and Dominic Mysterio. And this was a fun, fun tag team match. Um, yeah, and I've got to say right off the bat, Logan Paul did very well. I think a lot of people were like, oh, Logan Paul, for God's sake. But I, I had a feeling, I, I thought he'd be fine because, you know, he's very athletic. He's got a wrestling background, a boxing background. He keeps in shape. Um, and I've seen, I saw videos of him training at the PC with Miz, and he was really, he was working really hard to to get to do some good stuff in this match. I'm so in the, probably in the rehearsing of this match, he worked really hard. And yeah, this was a fun 11, 11 minute tag team match, and I really enjoyed it. And Logan did really well, and obviously Miz, Miz and Dominic and Ray were all great as always. But uh, I just want to say with Logan, he did, he hit a uh, a one point, he hit a running power slam like Braun Strowman on it on Dominic. That was really cool. Uh, he hit the three amigos. On Ray, the cheek, <laughs> the crowd were booing like crazy, but yeah, he hit the three amigos, that was great. And he hit a frog splash at one point, I believe. I think it was either on Dominic or Ray, but yeah, he hit a frog splash. And go, oh yeah, and, and Logan did the, like the Eddie Guerrero, and that, oh, he was really, really violent at the crowd. It was great. Logan did really well, man. Uh, he's, he's, he's such a showman. Miz did good too. Obviously, he was like getting beat up for a lot of the match, but obviously Logan made a few hot, quick hot tags and Ray and Dominic did grace. And towards the end of the match, it looked like Logan got Logan got hit with a six one nine, I believe, a, do a double six one nine. And the crowd were going crazy, and it looked like they were both about to win. But Miz made a cheeky hot tag when no one was when no one was watching. And then looks from when they're out, they're out to pin Logan. Uh, in comes in comes um, Miz. He hits uh, I got like a pop, what a a suplex or a body slam on Dominic, and then Dominic goes out the ring, and then Miz hits a skull crushing finale on Rey Mysterio. One, two, three. Oh, and I was watching it with Callum, and Callum was gutted because you know Rey's his bay, and to see Rey get pinned by the Miz at WrestleMania, that's that's a bitter pill to swallow. But um, yeah, it, I. It's a win for the Miz and Logan Paul. I did predict the Mysterios because I thought maybe Logan would turn on the Miz, but that didn't happen. It was the other way around. Um, so yeah, poor, poor Ray and Dominic, but it, it was a fun, solid match, and Logan Paul looked really good, and if he wants to maybe get back in the ring again at some point, I'd, I'd be down, because Logan Paul did really well. I think that was one of the best celebrity debuts ever. Probably, he's probably up there up there with Bad Bunny last year, and Ronda Rousey from WrestleMania 30... Well, not maybe not quite as good as Ronda Rousey in WrestleMania 34, but still, it was definitely up there. So good on you, Logan Paul. So, and at the end, of, Logan and Miz are doing that, and then... And then the Miz hits a skull crushing finale on on Logan to a big pop, and uh, the, the crowd went crazy. And Logan was like, the Miz was like, yeah, yeah. And Logan Logan just didn't sell it. He got up pretty quickly, and I was like looking at looking like, what the hell just happened? So, are we teasing a Miz and Logan Paul feud later on this year? Maybe maybe at SummerSlam. Oh, net. <laughs> but yeah, it, it was fine. It was fine. It was a, it was a good tag team match. And next up, we got probably one of the matches. Of the, well, probably. Arguably the match of the night. Um, yes, we got Bianca Belair challenging Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's Championship. And uh, yeah, this was great. They were great. This was a really good tag team match. This was a really good uh, singles match between Becky and Bianca. I mean, we knew this was going to be good. Bianca Belair is amazing. Becky Lynch is amazing. We knew these two were going to pull on an amazing match. In the match. I mean, a match we never got to see at SummerSlam. Because, you know, when, when uh, Becky came back and squashed poor Bianca. So this was like a whole big redemption storyline. Um, for Bianca finally getting her, her, her payback on Becky for what happened at SummerSlam last year, but uh, Bianca got this great entrance like like this jazz band. It was like a big massive orchestral band. It was like, playing her theme, and the match gets going. And it for nineteen minutes, these two women, women went at it. It was a really good, really good match. So many trading blows, so many, so, a lot of back and forth action. At the, the beginning of the match, it looked like uh, Becky was going to win again. She hit a she hit a manhandle slam again really early on, but Be Bianca kicked out this time. Whew. So we didn't get a repeat of SummerSlam. Uh, and Becky, Becky then dominated a bit of the match. She tried to get, she tried to hit the, the disarmor a few times, but Bianca got out of it. There was a, really, there was a few really cool top rope spots. There's some cool submission spots. It was just a really, really fast paced match. This was, this was great. And Bianca Belair is fast becoming one of the top women in the company. Well, if not, if she, if she isn't already, uh, based on what happened last year with with her and Sasha in, in the main event of Night One. A uh, really, really good match. Uh, and then towards the end, uh, it looks like Becky was about to win. She I think she tried to hit like a manhandle slam from the second rope, but Bianca Bianca counted it, and then they went back down. And then she hit the KOD to a massive pop from the crowd. One, two, three! Ah! And Bianca Belair gets her redemption. You know, that's what the storyline was. It was a big redemption storyline, getting her payback on Becky. And yet Bianca Belair once again, well, well not, not once again, is the new uh, Raw Women's Champion because she was SmackDown Women's Champion, wasn't she? So 
Uh, Bianca Belair is now the Raw Women's Champion, yes, and beating Becky Lynch uh, in a really good match, probably match of the night in my opinion. Well, mm, it's it, I think another match was up there as well, but yeah, it was definitely one of the best matches of night one. Probably will be the, one of the best matches of both nights in my opinion. Well done, Bianca. Well done, Becky. Really good match. And it was on. It was in my opinion, it was just as just as good as Sasha and Bianca from last year's WrestleMania. Really good match. And well done, Bianca Belair. It's a big it's a massive pop from the crowd. So you can tell how invested they are in her. And yeah, we'll see what happens next. Maybe there'll, maybe there'll be a rematch at WrestleMania Backlash. We we will see. But a very good match. And well, well done, Bianca. Well done, Becky. Really, really good match. And next up, we got a singles match. Yes, we got we got Seth Rollins coming out in his gear oh, 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 with a big choir. That was great. And seeing who is who is his mystery opponent, even though we all we all knew who it was. And then the, the lights go out. And then boo! I see. Well, I don't know, Steve. It's, it out comes from the smoke rising up is Cody Rhodes. Ah, yes, Cody Rhodes is back to a massive pop. We all knew he was coming back. It was like the worst kept secret ever. We all knew Cody Rhodes. It, it was going to be Cody Rhodes, and yeah, he, and I'm, I'm amazed. It, it wasn't smoke and mirrors. It was his AEW theme song. I was like wearing his AEW in ring gear, I believe. So. Blimey, I, 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 I'm amazed they could do that. Maybe, maybe Cody has his own rights to his music and gear. Not AEW, so fair enough. And yeah, he came out with all the smoke. It was just great to see Cody Rhodes back. You know, after six years, he's been gone in AEW. So to see him back um, in WWE, it was just so... I was watching that. Am I, am I seeing this? It's, it is Cody Rhodes, right? Yeah. And then him and Seth put on a hell of a match. Uh, well, we all knew Seth and Cody Rhodes. This was going to be great. And they put on a, the longest match of the night at 21 minutes. And this was a fantastic match. Really good. It, it did have a bit of a slow start with some, some grapple holds and some rest holds. And they, they were feeling each other out. It, it, it had a bit of a slow start for the first few minutes. But then when, when it got going, it got really good between Seth and Cody. They were hitting trading blows. It was very back and forth. There were lots of top rope manoeuvres. Um, Cody at one point hit the... Um, Oh, at one point he hits the crossroads on Seth, and we thought that's gonna be it. But though Seth kicked out, it was like, oh my god, there was a, this is awesome chat. It was just such a really good match between these two. And then Seth, I think at one point, I think he hits a pedigree. Yeah, and I was like, oh my god, is he actually gonna be with a pedigree? Because you know, I thought that'd be, that'd be quite symbolic using it. Because Cody Rhodes, I spoke a lot about Triple H and all that, hasn't he? But no, yeah, Cody Rhodes kicked out. Yeah. And then towards the end, it was I think Seth was like dominating, he was getting a little cocky. And I think he hit this like this like top rope manoeuvre, but I think Cody counted into another crossroads. Woo! Hits a crossroads, but then he gets up again, another crossroads, and then he I think to make it for the third time, three crossroads, boom, on Seth Rollins. One, two, three. And Cody Rhodes beats Seth Rollins in probably in my opinion, I th I think this was match of the night. Um sorry to any fans of Bianca and Becky. It was a very, very it, it, it was a very close second, but Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch and Cody Rhodes and Seth easily the best two matches of the night really good uh, and an amazing a really good match um, great to see Cody Rhodes back it, it is just so bizarre seeing him back you know after he's been gone with AEW for several years he, he helped create AEW the, the executive vice president and all that he spoke a lot of bad about, about, his, about his terrible time in WWE and now he's back it, it's just so bizarre but Obviously, they got big plans for him. They're not going to ruin him like they did last time with the whole star. Just gimmick. They've got big plans for Cody Rhodes, and I'm sure he's going to be. Have to, he's definitely going to have um, some big matches. I think coming 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 up later on this year. So yeah, quick. maybe there'll be a rematch at WrestleMania Backlash. I'll, I'll be down, but maybe not. Cause I don't think they want to give Seth another loss, do they? But it was a great match and great to see Cody Rhodes back, and the crowd were all hyped. So yeah, we'll see what the future holds for the rest of the year for uh, for Cody Rhodes. Then next up, we got a singles match for the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship. Yes, we got Charlotte Fleur defending the, 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 the belt up against Rowdy Ronda Rousey. And um, this was good. It was good. It, it went 18 and a half minutes. Um, but I do think this match was not a letdown, but it, it, it wasn't It wasn't amazing, if you get me. Um, so the match gets started. Um... And it's quite even to begin with, you know, Ronda and Charlotte are feeling each other out. There's, like, there's a lot of, like, in the, again, they're in the corners, grappling with each other. But Ronda does get a few advantages. She tries to hit the arm bar a few times, but Charlotte gets out of the ring. Um, and they go, they go outside the ring for a little bit. There's a few uh, against, like, the turnbuckle and all, and all that. However, th this this match was a little bit sloppy. I will say that there was a few missed 
miscommunicated spots like Charlotte had to try to try to do the somersault but it didn't fully connect it looked a bit sloppy um at one point Charlotte had a very unfortunate wardrobe malfunction I think that distracted a little bit from the match um especially people, people watching at home um and it, it just felt a bit sloppy there was a few there was a few spots where like Ronda didn't fully the, connect or Charlotte didn't fully connect maybe there was just a bit of a, a, a miscommunication I mean like I said Mitt Ronda was probably just a bit, a bit rusty you know this is like her first proper full in-ring match back in, in years you know if you don't count Elimination Chamber and the Royal Rumble so she probably was going to be a bit rusty even though she probably did train very hard for this match but yeah it just it wasn't it wasn't as good as Bianca and, and Becky in my opinion yeah it, it fell a bit short but it still was it, it still was good in my opinion it was and then it, then the ending got a bit sloppy so the ref gets taken out with a spear uh, and then Ronda gets Charlotte in an armbar. Ron, uh, and Charlotte, Charlotte's tapping out. So Ronda's like, Ronda's like, Ronda thinks she thinks she's won, but the ref's not there. And then she tries to get the ref back up, and he's, he get, and then Charlotte hits a big boot, a big boot on Ronda. One, two, three. And I was just sat there going, really? So that's Ronda's te if you don't, first clean. Pinfall loss, if you don't count the, the terrible finish from WrestleMania 35 with the roll-up with Becky. It was a, a big boot. A big boot. Is that that's not one of Charlotte's finishes? That's, it's, I thought that either the natural selection or the figure eight, but a big boot beats Ronda Rousey. Are you serious? Ronda Rousey? Who you've been... <laughs> it just it was a bit of a hollow ending. And then Charlotte's like, yeah, because obviously she... she um, and it was it did suck her on because she had she had the match won twice I think on one occasion with another submission where Charlotte was like tapping out but or she or she was going to get pinned but the ref was down I think it was Charles Robinson it was a big surprise but uh, yeah Charlotte's like that outside the ring and Ron, Ronda gets up pretty quickly she she doesn't really sell the big boots she gets up quite quickly uh, and she's just like that looking at looking looking around and I had that match won so I think there's going to be a rematch I don't think this feud's over I think there's going to be a rematch with Ronda and Charlotte probably at, at Wrestlemania backlash and I think that's when Ronda will win the Smackdown Women's Championship but why not why not just do it here at Wrestlemania in front of what 70,000 people why why do it at the next the next show which will be in a much smaller arena I, I, don't, I don't know you know that's a that's a Royal Rumble loss isn't it well the, the winner of the Royal Rumble didn't win at Wrestlemania um and I don't see Brock winning tonight, so that's going to be both both winners of the Royal Rumble don't win. When's the last time that happened? Was it 20, 2018 with Shinsuke and Asuka? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, the match was a bit sloppy. Like I said, it wasn't wasn't amazing, but it, it definitely was good, but not as good as Charlotte and Ronda's match, with, like I say, Survivor Series. But hopefully they can work on those those spots a little bit more if they are going to have a rematch, which I think they definitely will be, probably at, at WrestleMania Backlash. But yeah, yeah. It, it, it was fine, and I'm sure, I'm sure there'll be a, a, another match at WrestleMania Backlash. So this feud definitely isn't over, definitely. Then on to the main events, which oh, oh, so I'm wearing this top. Uh, well, that. <laughs> yes, the main event, which just put a massive smile on my face. So yes, the Kevin Owens show with special guest Stone Cold Steve Austin. So KO comes out first, then Stone Cold comes out to a massive pop. Then he comes, he leaves, and he comes back out on a quad bike. And yeah, like classic, classic Stone Cold. He drives around the ring. KO's just like. Then he gets in the ring finally. And he just, he just smashes up the KO signs. Then they sit down. They, they cut a bit of a promo, promo on each other. You know, Stone Cold's like, you are one dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> you want to see me open a can of whoopass and Kevin, Kevin Owens? Say what? What? Oh, it was great. And Kevin Owens was just saying how much he dislikes Texas and uh, continuing how much he dislikes Stone Cold Steve Austin. And then he says, I wanted you. I want you to have a match. Not not a talk show. I've tricked you, Steve. I want us to have a no holds barred match. And I was like, no way. Stone Cold is not going to wrestle. No way. And then Stone Cold just goes, if I had my first match here in Texas... And I'm going to have my last match here in Texas. You're on, Stone. You're on, Kevin Owens. So I was like, oh, my God. So Stone Cold and Kevin Owens actually have a match. <laughs> a no-holds-barred match. And I was like, no. And it's, I was like, this is going to be like one stunner done. There's no way, Ke there's no way Stone Cold can wrestle a, a match. But I was wrong. This, this, went, this went 13 and a half minutes. <laughs> I was, I was just like, oh my god, this this is Stone Cold Steve Austin, who hasn't wrestled in 19 years. His last match was WrestleMania 19. Uh, you know, at 57 years old, I was like, there's, there's no way he couldn't do a, a, a match. And I was like, but he did! 
Oh, and, it, and it was really good. I mean, he didn't look rusty. He didn't look sloppy. I mean, he was a bit slow on some of his punches and kicks. But, you know, that's, he, he's nearly 60 in a few years, but he, he still looked like the, the stone cold of old from the 90s and the noughties that we all know and love. And he actually, it was great. They, they go in the audience for a bit. There was a spot where him. KO, Steve Austin throws KO through a table. That was great. They go out, they go into the audience and brawl for a little bit. Kevin Owens gets back on top for a little bit. They have a, so Kevin Owens did get quite a bit of offense in, which I was surprised with. I thought it would be a squash, but no. Uh, Stone Cold took quite a few bumps. <laughs> the guy's got guts. I mean, obviously, he's trained very hard. He must have trained very hard to get back in in-ring shape. So credit, credit Steve Austin. And yeah, this was it was competitive. And they fight in the audience for a bit. They come back in. Stone Cold, I think he throws KO onto the table. And then he, he starts having some beers and he, he spits in KO's face. <laughs> it was fantastic. And then they go up, they go up the ramp for a little bit. And KO hit, I mean, Stone Cold hits two suplexes on KO on both sides of the WrestleMania ramp by the entrance. And I was like, I was, I was just watching this match going, I was just, I was a little kid again. Because I, I grew up watching Stone Cold Steve Austin and I had all the VHS tapes of all the Attitude Era pay per views like. WrestleMania 15, WrestleMania uh, 2017, you know, his match with The Rock, you know, Stone Cold's one of my favourite wrestlers of all time, definitely top five, so to see him back after 19 years wrestling a match, it, it, I, it, I was nearly, I was getting a bit teary, because it was just, it was like, I was, I was a little kid again, watching Stone Cold Steve Austin in my room as a, as a kid, with all those big fat VHS tapes from Attitude Era, Attitude Era pay-per-views, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> it was great, and they get back in the ring, and KO hits a stunner, but luckily, uh, Steve Austin kicks out. Of course, he was going to kick out. There's no way he'd been with that. But then, then he gets back up, and then I think he tries to hit another one, like with the whole, you know, that. But then I think Steve Austin counters it, hits a stunner of his own. One, two, three, din -in, din -in -in, yeah. and Stone Cold beats Kevin Owens by pinfall in a in a crazy no holds barred match. This, this went thirteen and a half minutes. I couldn't believe it. I thought this would be like two, three minutes tops. But no, credit to Stone Cold, man. He if he's one tough SOB at 57 years of age, he hasn't wrestled within nearly 20 years to come back and have a pretty hard hitting, uh, no holds barred match with Kevin Owens. Whew, credit to Kevin, credit to Steve Austin, man. Wow. And he, he looked like he hasn't missed a bit. He, beat, he didn't, he didn't look rusty. He didn't look sloppy. He looked like he, he looked like the stone cold of old back, back from the two thousands and, and the nineties. Wow. <laughs> It was great, and at the end of the match, he just he just drinks tons of beers, like 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 twelve twelve cans. He just keeps drinking them and drinking them. Then he hits another KO. He, he hits another um, stunner on KO. It was, <laughs> it was lovely. Uh, and then Byron Saxton gets in the ring, and he hits he he, he drinks a beer of Byron Saxton, and then he hits a stunner on he hits a stunner on Byron Saxton, and yeah, and that and so ends night one with Stone Cold whoosh, with the whole ox, the crowd going nuts. <laughs> Drinking his beer, and that I assume that's got to be Stone Cold's final match. Like he probably came back for one last, one last hurrah. Uh, so yeah, that what a but what a match! What a way to end night one with Stone Cold beating up Kevin Owens for thirteen minutes. It was, <laughs> it was fantastic. I'm just, I'm just thinking about it, lads. Oh man, oh man, just, just seeing Stone Cold back wrestling. Whew. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting all okay. I was a little kid again. I was a little kid again, just watching him wrestle. Oh man, because he is he is the goat. He's one of the Austin's one of my top five wrestlers. So yeah, but that that was night one of WrestleMania thirty eight. A really solid night of wrestling. You know, it not, not wasn't there wasn't one bad match. I think the weakest match is probably Usos and the, the Usos and Shinsuke, but that was because Brooks got injured. Drew and Corbin was fine. Miz and the, the tag team match with, with Miz and Logan and Mysterio was was very good. Bianca and Becky, amazing. Cody Rhodes and Seth, really, really good, fantastic. Charlotte and Ronda, it, it, it was good. Just, it was definitely it wasn't bad. It was it was just good. But hopefully they can have a better a better match and a better a better ending at uh, at the next pay per view. Um, and Stone Cold and KO was just so much nostalgia, so much childhood memories. Watching KO, watching watching Steve Austin back and beating up Kevin, opening up, opening up a can of whoop ass on uh, on uh, on Kevin Owens and saying that's the bottom line because Stone Cold said so. So yeah, guys, that were my thoughts of WrestleMania 38 Night 1. Really good show, uh, and I'm looking forward to Night 2. Um, I think Night 2 is going to be really good too. You know, we've, we've got, um, I'm looking forward to Johnny Knoxville and Sami Zayn, and anything goes. Uh, the Triple Threat Tag Team match, I'm sure, is going to be good. Edge and AJ Styles are probably going to be match of the night contender. 
Uh, and the main event, you know, with Brock and Roman, winner takes all. The belt, belt for belt, that's going to be huge. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that too. So I think night two is going to be going to be really good as well. So yeah, guys, that's my thoughts for WrestleMania at night one. I'll be, I'll be back uh, tomorrow morning or afternoon. I probably need a, a good night's sleep because I didn't get I didn't go to bed till like five o'clock this morning. Uh, so yeah, uh, hope you all enjoyed night one, guys. Hope you all enjoyed night two. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon with my WrestleMania night two uh, review. So. See you all see you all tomorrow then guys